All right, we've seen your comments. We know what you're thinking. Where is the 2v2 tier list? Well, today we will answer all of your questions about the 2s bracket in 9.1. We consulted with some of the best 2v2 players in the world to get the inside scoop on the meta during Season 2. And don't worry, you won't be left out because we will be including every class in this list. So if you want to know how you rank, stay tuned because this is one for you. As always though, we have a quick question. What do you think is the best comp in the game for 2v2 right now? We will give you our list in just a sec, but maybe you've queued some games or watched some streams with absolutely broken comps, so let us know what they are. And speaking of which, don't you wish you were good enough to play Arena with your favorite PvP streamers? If that's your dream, then Skillcapped is the place for you. Our exclusive arena commentaries include lessons directly from the best players in the world. Our guides take you through arena games step by step, showing you how to dominate PvP just like the pros. And with prices as low as $4.99 a month with a money back guarantee, we're confident that our website will elevate your gameplay to the next level. So if you want to learn what it takes to play exactly like your favorite streamer, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Rarely do we ever give out the S Plus award in our tier list, but this season, well, let's just say a few comps are absolutely broken and they all have one thing in common. Starting off our trio as one of the best comps in the game is Arms Warrior Resto Druid. One huge reason for dominance of Arms Warrior is that armor values are actually lower in Season 2 compared to Season 1, something which was made public by popular WoW YouTuber Rex Troy in a recent video. This armor nerf makes warrior pressure insanely overtuned right now as their physical damage is destroying enemy teams with the game-wide armor nerf. Combined with the mana efficiency and consistent healing of Arresto Druid, this comp is super strong going into Season 2. Joining it on the S Plus tier is Assassination Resto Druid, a comp that has slowly creeped its way into popularity since our last update. Assassination Rogues do some of the highest sustained damage in the game, easily being capable of 4k DPS in some matchups. Their ability to do massive spread pressure while gaining increased healing reduction through the newly added Hematoxin talent has elevated this comp to an entirely new level in Season 1. One of the biggest strengths of this comp is just how well it does into Holy Priests and Resto Shamans, with Rogue damage being unhealable in later stages of dampening. And speaking of unhealable damage, BM Hunter Resto Druid rounds out our trio of god tier comps of the 2v2 bracket. Hunters continue to dominate the 2's ladder, especially now after some key damage buffs and the hidden armor nerfs going to Season 2. With some of the best sustained damage in the game, BM Hunters simply need to outlast their opponents, gradually wearing down at enemy resources until damage becomes completely unhealable. And with the efficiency of a Resto Druid to back them up, BM Hunters can easily make it to the end game, where dampening is high enough for damage to completely overwhelm most teams. Jumping down to the S tier, we have our first Feral Druid comp, with Feral Priest being one of the strongest teams in the game. Both healing specs work well in this setup, as Feral Druids have enough healing on their own to soak damage in the early stages of the game. Combined with the consistent damage of a Necrolord Feral Druid, this comp is well suited to overwhelm its opponents as games go deeper into dampening. One key strength of Druids in the 2v2 bracket right now is their ability to dispel curses, which comes in handy for countering the popular Shackles trinket. Its channel effect is a curse, meaning it can be instantly removed with their dispel. Some Feral Druids are even swapping to Night Fae for Season 2 with the introduction of a new Convoke Legendary. This gives the ability a 1 minute CD and allows them to deal massive bursts during stun setups. After some key buffs in 9.1, Survival is crushing the 2's bracket once again, working incredibly well with Resto Druids and Holy Priests. Survival Hunter damage is really good in Season 2, having some of the highest sustained DPS in the game after its buffs in the last patch. With the added utility of Mending Bandage, Survival has a key defensive option against Feral Druids and Assassination Rogues to help mitigate pressure, but with the Craven Stratagem Legendary, they can instantly remove the Shackles debuff on themselves. And even though it isn't as strong as its Resto Druid variant, BM Hunter Holy Priest continues to dominate the bracket. Once again, BM Hunter damage is simply too much for many low tier comps to deal with. When combined with the control and damage of a Holy Priest, this team can simply overwhelm enemy teams with pressure as dampening mounts. One key issue with Priests this meta is a lack of a curse dispel to deal with the Shackles trinket, but this comp is able to handle it fairly well due to Greater Fade and the Craven Stratagem Legendary. If you haven't fought a Demon Hunter in 2v2 yet this season, consider yourself lucky because they have some of the craziest damage in the game. Their early game pressure is absolutely insane when paired with the Resto Shaman, especially with the increasingly popular Deep Tremor Legendary, which turns their Earth Elemental into Dwayne the Rock Johnson and gives you the people's elbow for a minute straight. Just like Demon Hunters, Windwalker Monks are absolutely cranking damage this patch, having some of the highest burst of any spec in the game. 
When you combine that with the longevity of a Resto Druid or the early game pressure of a Resto Shaman, Windwalker Monks are able to crush many of the low tier setups with just the momentum of their offensive cooldowns, no CC required. And finally, rounding out the S tier is Arms Warrior Resto Shaman. By now, you should be noticing a bit of a trend. Resto Druids are the kings of 2v2, but Shamans and Priests are there to compete. Although not as strong as with the Druid, Warrior Shaman remains a staple setup in the Season 2 meta. Both of these classes can absolutely pump out pressure, with Resto Shamans having some of the best early game damage in the bracket. Before we jump into the A tier, we have to go over some comps that are almost S tier but have a few key weaknesses. Windwalker Monk Holy Paladin is almost great, if it only had a curse to spell. As we mentioned earlier, no curse to spell means it's harder to counter the Shackles Trinket, which is a huge problem given its popularity. But this comp is still able to bang out wins solely on the back of the burst damage from both of these classes, so be sure to respect this setup anytime you run into it this season. Sub Rogue Holy Priest is another comp that you have to respect every time you run into it. Its burst setups are some of the best in the game, being able to seamlessly cross CC targets for all-in win conditions. This comp works okay with a Disc Priest, but the control, damage, and efficiency of Holy Priests are better suited for Season 2 play. And finally, nearly making it to the S tier are some other Assassination Rogue comps with Holy Priests and Resto Shamans as their healer. Although these healers have more offensive potential, they lack the late game efficiency of Resto Druids that allows Assassination Rogues to completely dominate the late game. Moving on to the A tier, we have our first comp with a caster DPS. Fire Mage Holy Priest is one of the scariest teams in the game when played by highly skilled players. It is one of the best 100-0 kill setups, capable of killing any class in the game with its Chastise, Meteor, Combustion combo. But with great power comes great responsibility, and even though the setup absolutely bangs, it requires nearly perfect play to consistently execute. By now, you might be wondering, okay, but where is Mage Rogue? Well, it's here once again as one of the best double DPS setups in Season 2. You already know the strength of this comp. It tries to kill you, you panic and die, or you don't panic and don't die, but manage to panic and die 30 seconds later. Despite some key nerfs to sub rogues in 9.1, this comp still is one of the best kill setups in the game and is a massive execution test for many mid-tier teams. Mistweaver monks finally have a high tier comp in Shadowlands, well, as long as they are playing with one of the best specs in the game. Arms Warrior Mistweaver monk is one of the weakest versions of the setup, but still really good due almost entirely to the strength of warriors. Look, monks did get some key buffs in 9.1, but they still struggle in the healing department, something which can get quite intensive in late stages of dampening. The first comp on our B tier requires a bit of explanation. Elemental Shamans have a really awkward place in 2v2, lacking many of the essential tools to end games reliably when playing with a healer. With that in mind, they can gradually wear down at the enemy team, but require really consistent play to make it to the end game. With a high skill cap, this comp does have really great potential when it's in the right hands, but will fall flat for many inexperienced players. The same can be said of Destro Warlock Resto Druid. Don't get us wrong, this comp can absolutely bang out some wins on the back of Chaos Bolt damage alone, but it requires really intelligent play in order to beat some of the best teams. Warlocks need to be good at kiting in 2v2, since they aren't durable enough to tank damage the whole game. With that in mind, they are able to reverse pressure instantly during stun and coil setups with their Feral Affinity Resto Druid partners. Shadow Priests are really good in 3v3 right now, but it doesn't perfectly translate to 2v2 success. The spec works well with a variety of setups, including all three of the meta healers as well as some double DPS setups with Feral Druids and Fire Mages. Just be aware that their double DPS success requires a bit of finesse, especially when paired with the Fire Mage. Although the comp is really strong in the right hands, it can flop like a fish when played by inexperienced players. Ret Paladins are another hybrid in a bit of an awkward place in 2v2. Because of their utility, they can play with pretty much any class in the game, but being a jack of all trades unfortunately means they are a master of none. Red Holy Priest is the closest thing they have to a high tier comp, but lacking a healing reduction effect and a curse to spell really punishes them against the game's best setups. Every season there's one comp that wins every game by putting its opponents to sleep. In Season 2, it's Frost Mage with a Resto Druid or Holy Priest. Look, it's okay to play the boring comp. You can win a lot of games, but you'll be spending a lot of time in Arena getting spat on by Salty Scrubs. Maybe I am one of them. And speaking of getting spit on, Prot Paladins have a few setups that are absolutely terrorizing the 2v2 ladder right now. Although the spec works with many different classes, it's doing exceptionally well right now on both EU and NA with BM Hunters, Arms Warriors, and Feral Druids. The biggest downfall of Prot in the current meta is how weak it is to the Shackles Trinket, but other than that, it performs like a pseudo-healer, with lots of off-heals and defenses to draw games into deep dampening. 
Outlaw Rogues are starting to see some play this patch, with some top level players experimenting with this pirate spec. After some key buffs last patch, Outlaw can perform really well in 2v2 with either a Holy Priest or Resto Druid. Its newly introduced talent called Float Like a Butterfly gives the spec a shortened CD on evasion, allowing Outlaw to go toe to toe with many top tier melee. Demo Warlocks are also starting to see some play in 9.1, performing pretty well with the meta healers. The spec can feel a bit clunky at times, often requiring a long damage ramp along with higher levels of dampening in order to close out games. This unfortunately makes it a bit of a sleepy setup, but if you can manage to stay awake for a few minutes, you can often outlast many mid-tier comps. Sub Rogue Disc Priest takes a seat behind its Holy Variant in Season 2. Despite having comparable damage and an almost identical win condition, Disc lacks the 2v2 finesse that Holy offers with Chastise. And although its all in damage setups can easily 100 0 many teams, Sub Rogues are still really squishy to other melee, even after getting Disarm as a baseline PvP talent. Rounding out the B tier are two unholy DK setups, working fairly well with Resto Shamans and Resto Druids. DKs are in a weird spot right now. They aren't overwhelming, they aren't underwhelming, they're just whelming. Their damage is still pretty good, but a lack of consistent healing reduction combined with relatively weak late game defense makes them considerably weaker than other top tier melee. Moving down to the low tiers, we have Enhancement Shamans. Just like Ellie, this spec isn't really optimized for 2v2. The best Enhancement teammates include Feral Druids and Ret Paladins, with some healer specs being suboptimal variants. With heals as their primary defense, higher levels of dampening become really difficult in longer matchups, usually forcing games to end super quickly. Balanced Druids are also in an awkward position in 2v2, being a subpar DPS when combined with many healing specs. Their damage is still scary during offensive CDs, especially if they are Night Fae playing with the new Convoke Legendary. The biggest downfall of the spec is the downtime between Celestial Alignment cooldowns, really struggling to find win conditions for minutes at a time. Affliction Warlocks are in a similar position. Working best with Holy Priests or Resto Druids, this spec is able to put out enormous pressure during its offensive CDs. Unfortunately, it also gets crushed by downtime, lacking reliable kill setups when Dark Soul is on cooldown. Frost DKs are noticeably weaker than Unholy in 2v2, and are tier lower due to glaring weaknesses. The lack of a reliable healing reduction effect combined with flimsiness during deep dampening puts this spec far behind other melee DPS in the bracket. And finally, rounding out the C tier are some Fury Warrior comps, ideally playing with a Resto Druid or Resto Shaman. Fury did get a flashy new healing reduction effect in 9.1, but it wasn't enough to elevate them to the level of other melee in Season 2. Its only real advantage over ARMS is that it has slightly more uptime against mage teams, but it really struggles to go toe to toe with other melee. And finally, we have two comps representing the lowest of the low tiers, the baddest of the bad and the saltiest of the salt. Mark's Hunter unfortunately falls way far behind many of the other high and mid tier specs for 2v2. It simply lacks the kill power of Beast Mastery while not even coming close to the utility of survival. Last, and maybe even least, we have our lone Arcane Mages, who can play with Resto Druids and Holy Priests if they're feeling brave. Arcane is actually okay in 3v3, where it has teammates to soak interrupts and coordinate CC, but alone, the spec is just a wet noodle, barely doing any damage outside of CDs and requiring picture-perfect coordinated control in order to win games. And here we have a complete picture of the 2v2 meta during the early stages of Season 2. The high tiers are dominated by a cast of god tier specs, with arms warriors, assassination rogues, and BM hunters leading the charge in the damage department, while resto druids dominate most of the bracket. Resto shamans and holy priests are still good on their own, often synergizing well with classes that are either burst or CC focused. With that in mind, one of the biggest factors that determines success in the bracket right now is the ability to deal with the new shackles trinket. Any team that lacks a curse to spell or a mechanic that can interact its effect will fall behind and will be at a huge disadvantage at higher ratings. For the meantime, our low tiers have a pretty steep mountain to climb, often lacking the tools necessary to compete with our high tier gods. And there you have our 2v2 meta snapshot for early season 2. The game is constantly evolving and we will update you with any developments in the bracket. In the meantime, if you're looking to gain rating in any bracket this season, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow where we will be updating all of our courses and commentaries for 9.1. As always though, thanks for watching, hope to see you soon.